Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of the Data Talks. In 2020 and 2021, the world experienced the biggest health crisis of the century. The ability of governments and health organizations to respond to this crisis was directly associated with the ability they had to collect data. Perhaps, perhaps, never before in human history we have we gathered so much information about one disease in such a short time as we have with the COVID-19. We tracked the dissemination of the virus around the world, searched for a community transmission, mapped the genome of the variants of the virus. We also developed, tested, and approved many vaccines worldwide and saw short, medium term, and uh, sorry, and saw the short and medium term effects in entirely adult populations. All this in less than two years. To make it possible, governments needed to adapt or even build information structures that allowed faster and smarter interventions. There, also, there was also the need to build structures for max vaccination campaigns. Due to many factors, some governments were more su successful uh, than others in this task. Uh, how are we managing data in health? Are our health systems smarter? And how can we use data to prevent diseases and anticipate new crises? That is the theme of our talk today. From Brazil, we have today Professor Dr. Cristóvão Barcelos. Mr. Barcelos holds a degree in geography from the State University of Rio de Janeiro and civil engineering from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. He has a master's degree in biological sciences from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro and a PhD in geosciences from the Fluminense Federal University. Mr. Barcelos was also a secretary of health in the state's governments of Rio de Janeiro between 1986 and 1995 and Rio Grande do Sul between 2001 and 2003. Mr. Barcelos is currently a professor of the postgraduate programs in public health at the National School of Public Health and Information and Communication in Health at the Oswaldo Cruz Foundation, the most important institution of health science and technology in Latin America. He works with health geography, mainly health monitoring, social spatial inequalities, sanitations, and health and climate change. Professor Christophan, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you all for the invitation. I, I'm, I will try to, to correspond to all this uh, curriculum. Uh, I, it was uh, hard to, to put all the all things we learned from decades of uh, uh research uh activities it, it, to, to turn it in on 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 information and the better decisions <clears throat> i hope to correspond that my, my my cv in this case good morning well, for, for everybody in brazil and and good afternoon for germans <clears throat> thank you very much uh i'm sure we are going to have a really good talk today our other guest uh, from Germany uh, is the master, Mara Mendes. Uh, Mrs. Mendes holds a bachelor's degree in social sciences and media studies at the University of Siegen, a master's degree in media communication and development at the London School of Economics and Political Science. She is now a PhD candidate in political science at the University of Münster, working on open data in health sector. Mara has a background in working, campaigning, and researching transparency, open data, open government, and public procurement. She is an expert in accessing the presence and quality of public data in different areas of public administration, having participated in relevant studies on the subject. Organizations she has worked for include the Open Knowledge Foundation Germany, Transparency International, and various universities. Mara, thank you very much for joining us today. 
Thank you, Jessica, for inviting me and hello to everyone watching now or listening later. And it's a pleasure for me to um, have a fruitful discussion with uh, the, the professor in Brazil and with you, Jessica, today. Well, thank you very much. So I would like to start with Professor Christoven. Uh, you have a really interesting and diverse academic background and a lot of experience in the public sector. Uh, it's also interesting that you have this approach that mixes geography and health. And I think I would like to know better, and I think our audience will, will also would like to know better, how uh, these two subjects deal with, would deal with each other. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, it was always about uh, data. Uh, we geographers have the, have the compromise, have, have the issue of uh, mapping risks, and there are many many approaches to what is it, what is exactly a risk. It, it may it may be uh, based on on the past uh, incidence rate of something of uh, some disease or maybe uh, the presence of uh, pollution source or a risk factor in, uh, in the space, or uh, even a lake where a mosquito breed. And, and, and the, the question is, how can we represent the risk in maps and, and indicators to choose the, the, the correct uh, uh spatial and, and analysis tool uh to have good data what which uh sources of uh of uh data we have and and most importantly uh how to interpret the the, the risk maps we we must know very very well the the territory yeah uh, it, it, sometimes we are not uh, able to to interpret the, the the maps alone as geographers, but we 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 have to consult the local population, uh, stakeholders, and 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 and, and this makes the, the the risk mapping activities very interactive, uh, very interesting. We we must know something about ecology, sociology to explain what is happening in uh, in a space. I was muted. <laughs> so this is this is really interesting that you bring this today because uh, you are already interacting really different arts from data together. It's for me as a Brazilian is in, is it interesting to listen about the mosquito where the mosquito grows because for us in a tro in tropical countries this is a big risk factor. So it makes a lot of sense. Maybe for other countries, this is not so logical, but for us, it's really a, a, a really risk factor. I agree with you. And now, Mara, you are a specialist in data. Uh, some of your work uh, includes the studies on the quality of public databases in Germany, such as public spending, company registration, lobby registration, etc. And I would like to, to get to know how did you move from this type of data to health data and how you would describe the quality of health data in Germany? Well, I think um, it's an interesting question because this research is something that kind of evolved from what I have done before. And it's the topic that I picked for my personal interest, if you want to say so. Um, so when working with public procurement data, um, I actually saw a lot of, you know, the data of public, I saw a lot of public spending data. And um, there was always the question, so where does most of the money go to? Uh, obviously, there are other areas where more money is spent, like in construction or so, um, but there's a field um, that kind of struck my interest because it's close to everyone, and that's health. Um, everyone 
wants to be healthy, obviously, um, and everyone wants to have access to uh, good medical um, supplies and medical aid. So um, this is something that I felt was very, very close to the citizen and that's something very tangible because people can relate to this because it affects them all. But at the same time, um, health is so important um, for our society because, um, yeah, it actually, you know, um, healthy, healthy people contribute to a healthy society and contribute to our economy. Um, and um, the better um, the healthcare system, the better people can actually live in our society and contribute contribute to it. So, also from a societal point of view and uh, from a political perspective, health is so important. Uh, so that's basically why I came to do further research on that. And um, so, data on healthcare, especially in Germany, well, that's something that is kind of interesting because. Um, there's, you know, there's a variety of data available already, and um, we, we kind of have to uh, differentiate a bit. So there's uh, health data that personally affects you, like your medical records um, and, uh, you know, what, what, what kind of... Um, uh, what kind of treatment you received and how much was spent on this. You have a, you, you can personally assess this. It's not publicly available, obviously, because it's uh, uh, because of privacy concerns. And that's uh, totally, uh, th that's very good that it's not available to everyone. But at the same time, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's that kind of junk of data that we have. And then we have obviously research data, but that's also not oftentimes available. Um, because, you know, there are also concerns to, to publish it, but there are also um, initiatives to share it amongst researchers. And um, then there's, uh, there's public procurement data available, but actually when doing research, uh, we actually, we worked together on this uh, for some parts, Jessica, we didn't find much and it was really, really difficult to assess it. So uh, there's the so there's there's different layers of, of data that could or should be available, and there's there's some involvement in Germany to actually get better at this. For instance, with a digital medical record um, for for citizens. But when looking at open data, there's there's not such a harsh push to actually publish data. So you would say that. Um when we talk about specifically diseases and treatments, this would be more um, available for uh, practitioners, for uh, uh, doctors and nurses, but not as so much a public policy indicator or a data that would help uh, officers to take decisions, to take uh, uh, database decisions. You mean um, specific data on specific diseases and treatments like they have been built to, for, to the health insurances? Yes. Well, that's kind of, that's also a challenge because that kind of data is obviously a, kind of available because it got, gets, uh, gets sent to the, to the health insurances by doctors and hospitals to uh, bill for their um, services. But at the same time, it's also categorized by uh, the medical professionals. And because it's categorized by them, it's, you know, it's very specific. It's, you know, statistically, it, it could be a bit um, uh, challenging, but it's also not openly available, but it gets, play, you know, for, for, budget, for budget reasons, it gets obviously uh, back to... Um, you know, it gets sent back to the health insurances and then it gets uh, back to, you know, it, gets, it becomes also available to public administration. So it's not um, entirely hidden, but at the same time, uh, that's, that's digging deeper into this. This is a very specific in the German healthcare system, but um, there, there's a lot of statistically, uh, there, there's statistic importance on how it's built and that's how it's the, 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 actually, the, the treatment truth is a bit skewed, I would say. Uh, yeah, but that's, that's really digging deep into uh, the German healthcare billing system.
Yes, uh, and it's Sorry. different systems, the German and the Brazilian, we need to stress that. So, uh, and, and now uh, Professor Christoph and, yeah. sorry. No, I, I was thinking about the, 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 the Brazilian situation here. Uh, there is an uh, on, ongoing debate about uh, autonomy of uh, medical doctors to prescribe uh, drugs and treat specific treatments for, for COVID-19. Uh, and the, and this is very very uh, very very complicated situation because there is a inf interference of uh, insurance companies. Uh, some hospitals adopt one, one treatment and 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 not another. Uh, there is a, the problem of costs. Uh, the, some some of these treatments are very expensive. Some are not. And uh, even even the government, the, the present government, uh, recommend recommend the chloroquine. Still recommending chloroquine for for treat for the treatment of COVID uh, COVID nineteen. So I, I'd like to to know if the the the, the governments or local local authorities in Germany are. Uh, how how they deal with the, this autonomy of medical doctors and hospitals and and the kind of uh, guideline uh, national guideline. Um, before yes. before Mara, just Sorry, just yeah. a second, I'm going to put another question on that because it's important to stress the difference between the two systems. In Brazil, we have one uh, health uh, universal system and private. Uh, systems, private insurance companies, they work in parallel. The, of course, uh, SUS, the, our universal healthcare system, uh, has some guidelines and these guidelines are shared with uh, the private companies, but they are different systems. And in Germany, Mara can explain better to us, uh, the, you don't have a SUS, but you have private uh, companies that offer the public insurance. So I, I would ask you to explain to us that so we could uh, understand better the difference between the two systems. Yes, we have public health insurances under which everyone needs to be insured. And if you um, and, and there are some preconditions under which you are privately insured. Uh, which you have to pay and they pay, um, yeah, you have to pay also the public health insurance from your salary, but it's, um, it's, it's a kind of dual system. Um, and, um, and at the public health, and we, ha we have guidelines for uh, basically both, um, but um, obviously for the public health insurance, they're a bit um, kind of strict not to say stricter but you know there's only certain things that that doctors can bill and for instance when it comes to medication actually in germany the discussion on covid 19 tr medical treatment is not that big because basically um yeah we we don't have we don't have recommendations for a certain medication to give and when you have covid 19 um, but um, actually, um, medication is prescribed by the doctor, and then uh, in some cases, the health insurance, even if it's a public health insurance, might have a, a contract with a pharmaceutical company, but that's for generic uh, medication, um, then I have a contract with a pharmaceutical um, company so that they get discounts on a certain medication. So it could be that I go and see a doctor and I get uh, prescribed a medication with the same, um, uh, how to say, the same um, uh, ingredient that, uh, how would you say? So, uh, sorry, now I'm lacking that one word, but the same ingredient that kind of treats your disease. And um, then Jessica would see a doctor and she has a, a def different uh, public health insurance and she gets the, uh, this same medication, but from a different company. So that could happen. Um, but yeah, and then at the same, at the same time with COVID-19, it's very specific because certain things are paid for by the government now, um, like the vaccination or tests were paid for. And, and so, it, it, you know, that, 
kind of got the system even a bit messier and that gets data management even messier because now the data is is moved to to even other actors that didn't play a role beforehand when it comes to billing Because before that, so Germany never had, this is actually a question that I also have. So before that, Germany never had a central system as they have, for example, the Robert Koch Institute for vaccinations, or this is new in Germany, or is was there before um, a, a system that would gather this information? Because uh, you are mentioning all the treatments here are doing through doctors so there is a there is no uh, there is no uba for example in brazil like this uh house in which you get the treatment but a doctor that is being paid with your public insurance so this is the main difference i would say as as a as a client of of this system now uh, so I would uh, there was no such uh, database before this is new here is this new here well, we have health authorities and certain diseases have to re be reported to them. Um, that has been there before. And um, in addition um, to that, doctors actually report um, statistics, but they're reported to their, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a speci specific authority for their billing because the doctors in their private practice, they don't actually bill directly to the health insurance. It goes uh, through a, a different fund, you know, and um, it's called the um, Kassenärztliche Vereinigung. So <laughs> it's, it's even <laughs> more complicated for, for outside viewers, basically, and so, or, or listeners. So um, basically, they, re, you know, they, they report on certain things, and specifically for chronic diseases, they do um, statistical reporting, but that's not published openly, or it will be published, or it's published, but then it's in medical reports, so it's not published as raw data. And uh, Professor Kistovan, I would like to make you the same question, the same original question. Uh, what would you say uh, that is the status quo of data in Brazil, of data on health in Brazil? Sorry, I was moved. Uh, well, I think Brazil has a long tradition of uh, health data dissemination. It's a, it's now uh, guaranteed by by uh, recent law uh, that uh, makes uh, all all public uh, data available. But there are some problems here. Uh, <clears throat> each institution may uh, must have a kind of uh, platform to 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 disseminate the, their data. In our case, uh, health data, we, we, we need uh, many sources of, uh, of information, such as uh, newborns, mortality, hospitalization, disease notification, laboratory tests, vaccines. Uh, and it, it, it's increasing the, the demand for, for, for good data and, and opportune and fastly free free available and uh it, it, it's making our lives a little bit complicated because because some institutions are very slow in in in, in uh disseminating data because they, they have a, a stage of uh, criticizing and and making uh, uh cleaning cleaning registers and checking uh quality of data etc uh, so uh the first issue first challenge in, in when we analyze covid uh data is to get every, everything together we have uh, many some people say we have we have in brazil hundreds of uh, information systems health information systems one for mortality, another for disease notification, another for vaccines, another. So we we must uh, understand that the the, the the set 
of the uh, data and make indicators sometimes combining combining uh, different information sources like if if we do we if we we want to do uh, to calculate uh, incidence rate we must we must get the the, the numerator from from the notification uh, information system and the, uh, the denominator from, from the census or estimates of population. So the, each, each of these indicators uh, sometimes are very complicated to get. Uh, uh, there's another, another thing that these information systems, they, they register health events, disparate health events. So someone got, got the vaccine, someone got, uh, was hospitalized, someone died, someone... Uh, so, uh, so we don't know exactly if, if this, this uh, person in hospital, they, uh, he, he, he or she uh, was vaccinated or not which treatment the, uh, the, uh, this people, uh, the, the people received. So the, the second issue here, second challenge we have is to link, link data, vaccine, vaccines, mortality, hospitalization, and, and et cetera. Uh, and and uh, almost all, all this, uh, the, the, those uh, information sources are, they, they have an administrative proposal so 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 sometimes it's very slow the, 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 the flow of information is very slow along the along the health information health, health system which is let's say 80 percent public 20 percent uh, private in brazil and uh it, it's very hard to combine timely and good quality data in Brazil. That, it, 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 was, it was a very difficult challenge during the, the, the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemics to get all, all this data together. We, the, the, the first, I think, the first initiatives were, were to, okay, let, let's, let's say it's a, they are separate health events. So we, we can build uh, a, a very useful tool like, uh, like uh, dashboards. Uh, there are many, many dashboards in, in, in Brazil now, from the natural, national level through to local levels. And uh, I think it was a very interesting uh, initiative and experience to get everything together, like, like uh, airplane cockpits or something like that you 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 see many many indicators some, some of them are saying it's okay but maybe one or just one of them are saying you you have a very low altitude and this may may uh, cause may may provoke an alarm in the system something is wrong what exactly is wrong? Sometimes the, 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 the indicators are, are, are uh, related, uh, let's say altitude and, and low uh, velocity or something like that in the, the airplane. So it, it, it was, it, it wasn't, it is still very, very important to keep this uh, dashboard uh, working with, with rapid, good quality opportune uh, and adequate indicator indicators to, to make decision better and we must uh, emphasize that um, decisions now are very local from from state governments or even uh, counties counties authorities because of omission of uh, in, in some in, in very very important aspects of, of from the federal government. So uh, this uh, the initiative of making dashboards are very very important. But we we, we need to 
uh, improve that, uh, make make it more easy, like like the airplane dashboard uh, panel, <clears throat> and make it uh, freely available, uh, user friendly and rapid. This is this is I think I think our our, our issue in, uh, along the the whole uh, pandemics in Brazil. So, uh, Professor, you would say that uh, one good consequence when speaking of data from the COVID nineteen crisis is that uh, there was this effort to gather those this information from different sources in one dashboard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we, we use sometimes we use uh, data from from outside the, the, the health set sector. For, for instance, we we are using we uh, in, in in Fiocruz, my, my institution. Sorry, was Valdir Cruz Foundation. Which, uh, it's very it's very important in Brazil and has a lot of uh, uh, relations with the German some German institutes and international public health institute so we 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 sometimes we use uh big data and 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 even uh for measuring and and uh, human mobility we are using for instance uh ways uh signals uh to 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 estimate how people are moving along uh, in, inside cities and google maps uh google maps are, are basically uh capture the, the, the coordinates and movements uh, people are get for, from from our smartphones gps so all this uh signals uh treat if correctly treated we, we 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 can say that people are mostly at home or in office or in in the market or streets or or even in 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 large events like a show or something like that carnival in brazil <laughs> of course so we, we so in, in in many many situations we 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 need information from from public from from other sectors uh, besides the, the the health sector. And uh, when you were talking about the different sources of data, I could from head think in a few uh, databases. So we are talking about IBGE for uh, newborns and deaths, I believe. Uh, we are talking about um, when you say data from different institutions, I think you were mentioning the secretaries of of municipal secretaries of health. Is this right? Yeah. And uh, and data source in this because I I we many many people assume that most of this information should be already gathered in the data source, data source. Uh, so data source is not um, doing this role yet. Yeah, it's not the, the, uh, fulfilling this role of gathering all the data from different sources. Yeah. The problem is that the, the data source is, the data source is a, is a uh, company, it's not a company, it's a department from, from the, 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 the big, belonging to the, the federal government. Mm -hmm. And it's it, the, 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 this institution is uh, responsible for, for making data available and also to build uh, information, new health information systems. So they have this task, which is a little bit difficult. And they are very good in, in disseminating mortality and newborn information. Uh, not this, not the, the, the not, uh, disease notification. It's uh, chaotic now, uh, mainly because of the, the pandemics. 
and uh, hospitalization they are very good but very very slow sometimes sometimes they 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 last uh, months or even years to make make one uh, register available because they have the, this methodology of uh, of uh, of uh, checking, checking and cleaning uh, data, they they think they, in some aspect they are right that they, they cannot disseminate uh, low quality data and or false data or even uh, mistakes in, in in data. Some in some aspect they are, they are correct, but in, in this case we use it. Uh, civil register for mortality. Some sometimes they are they are very very quick. If somebody dies in Brazil, they, they, uh, uh, the law say that uh, the family is, is uh, they must go to this register uh, civil register in order to 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 publicize and register the death. Uh, and th this can be used to 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 make calculation about uh, excess of day of uh, deaths, which which was adopted in many many countries in the world. Uh, we we had in two thousand twenty about uh, twenty percent of uh, excess uh, deaths in Brazil, and um, let's say seventy percent due to covid uh, covid disease related disease so uh, there was there was also some indirect aspect uh, impacts of uh, the the pandemics uh, economic uh, the, fla the 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 failure or collapse of uh, health health systems hospitals and and, and everything so uh so, sometimes we, we we must use uh, alternative data sources to uh to access or to to assess sorry uh to assess uh, the impact of uh, quickly and and even even with low quality information uh we must do that to 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 make a kind of uh, evaluation of the stage of uh, stage and the impact of uh, pandemics in Brazil. This is this is really interesting to know, and I, as a data science a scientist, I must say I feel sorry <laughs> for the data scientists who need to go after all this uh, information in different sources and also with different types of, of information because they were created in different ways. So which means that you need to uh, standardize everything before you use. And this actually doesn't help when we need uh, faster interventions. I, I would like now to, to ask Mara, um, because Mara, you, realize, you recently published a paper about uh, usage of data to prevent diseases like diabetes. And you compared um, different health uh, systems in Europe and uh, with German. And uh, what are the best practice in this regard? And what impact data can have in preventing chronic diseases? So, so far we talked about for uh, COVID-19 and also some tropical diseases related to um, uh, some some environmental conditions like dengue, chikungunya, Zika, which all are transmitted by the same mosquito. And if you are in Brazil, you know that. <laughs> and but how about these other diseases? Um, first of all, quickly, that's actually really interesting because I actually one of the first questions I had um, was where do you find the data? Um, to uh, create your to create ma risk maps or dashboards and then well your answer was uh, yeah disappointing and at the same time not um, surprising at all that you have to go the long way to find the actual data so that's uh, kind of uh, I think it's a problem that we have face in both countries um, just just quickly to to uh, add to that because I think I, I was a bit surprised because Brazil beforehand um, seemed to me always to be better in data publication and transparency but um, 
At the same time, of course, when creating your own dashboards, you tap into other data resources that might not be government related data. So you don't find it on a government website. But in Germany, it's also like that. It's scattered and it's due to the federal state system and but also due to um, municipalities that publish data. But that was just a quick discourse. Um, actually coming back to uh, my research on um, diabetes, actually I did the research on diabetes because it's one of the, it's, it's a chronic disease and it affects uh, so many people and will in the coming years affect even more people because it's a, it's our societal burden you know we, we're causing the, the disease in parts ourselves because of our nutrition and our um, yeah our life choices basically and um, actually when when you asked for um, uh, for best practices in this regard and obviously the best practice would be to find uh, similar uh, data than that for, um, for the, uh, the diseases or yeah, the uh, tropical diseases and, and COVID-19 mentioned before, like um, health and mortality statistics, um, but also, you know, data on days at the hospital spent, um, doctor's visits, um, other diseases that occur to, due to diabetes. Um, in, the, in the case of diabetes, diabetes, those can be eye or foot diseases or cardiovascular diseases. Um, they're due to, or other conditions that are due to the ex pre-existing condition of diabetes. Um, and that all, is all data that kind of relates to that uh, disease. And in Germany, for instance, um, you would ideally find it on the GAF data um, website where all the open data should be accumulated, but you can only find or mainly find data that is um, basically also available through the other institutions like the World Health Organization or the OECD. And so it's not um, very specific data that you can find there. Um, I actually also looked at the UK and they have a far um, longer tradi tradition in opening up data and they had more specific data on diabetes, just as I said, for instance, data on eye examinations. Um, this, is, this is actually something that is really useful also for research purposes for um, basically for, for, um, for doctors to, to find out more about what other doctors are doing in, in that regard. Um, and um, yeah, you can, can hardly find that in Germany and it's very, very, very scattered, um, which as I said before, is probably also because of the federal system, but also because of the system that we're facing with our, you know, in, in um, England, they have also the na national health um, service. So um, the data is basically a bit easier to find and it's, it's accumulated because of one national health organization. Um, and actually um, there are a lot of studies that show that patients are really interested in their own health data. Um, actually in Germany, um, you have now the medical records on a, on a card and soon um, patients will be able to actually donate their data for research purposes, but they have to agree to do so. So even if it's, it's anonymous, um, they have to agree. And at, it's, uh, we will see how many people will agree and how much it is promoted to actually share the data. Um, because when it comes to personal data and, and with health regards, people tend to not uh, really like to overshare. But when it comes to like health apps and running apps, they like to share their half, uh, their pace and heart rate and, and whatnot. Um, so, yeah. Um, and actually those, this information that you would find then um, available, actually, you know, something that would be the most interesting to me, at least um, from a research perspective, would be um, information on, on medication prices and actually treatment pricing. Um, because I think that's very, com it's comparable, comparable across countries if you factor in um, other variables and uh, it could be just interesting and also uh, 
interesting um, to people uh, or to patients to find out more how much is that medication how well is it performing on the market you know kind of benchmarking um, kind of their treatment options and also if you have more data on chronic diseases available openly available uh, then you might be able to create better uh, risk assessment software um, or tools to um, so that patients can be warned um, I think um, it's in the UK that you will find a website where you can put in your health data and they will assess for you how likely um, you are to have diabetes um, and that actually uh, could um, in the end um, uh, help you to prevent having the de disease if you make certain life choices. You know, if you're more likely to, to have diabetes, then maybe um, your health choice, your life choice should be a bit healthier when it comes to nutrition and to, um, you know, um, physical activities or whatnot. And that's, that's actually something that can help and prevent. And also um, in other cases, it has shown that um, if health related data is available, that's not related to, um, to disease, to chronic diseases, but for instance, um, when in the UK data on certain, certain um, surgeries were, was published, the surgeries performed way better, you know, or the, the, the uh, you know, the success rate went up because there were some learning, there, there was a learning curve basically. And also uh, there was a, the ambition of su surgeons to perform better because the data was published. So I think it's, there's, there's only benefits to publishing data and especially to, for chronic diseases because it's something that you can still prevent um, in some cases, you know, I'm not saying that everyone who is that hands up having di diabetes uh, could have prevented it. It's uh, this is very specific, first of all, to diabetes type two, and but that's the type of diabe diabetes that most of the patients have. It is interesting just to think. Um, of course, diabetes is a, a well studied disease. We have. Uh, register for registers from a, for a long time now, and it's a first world also kind of disease, which means that there are lots of studies and records, uh, despite the fact that it's increasing uh, in the global south uh, this disease right now. But and it's interesting to think when you say that when you say about the open data available and the choices we can make when we compare this to the COVID nineteen. Uh, we saw, for example, um, so we saw that a uh, certain country, from Israel, adopted this mass vaccination with a certain type of, of vaccine. What was the effect? So we saw, like, in lifetime, uh, the effects of a treatment inside of a pop an entire population is like the whole world was studying, studying the disease together. So I think I think is an interesting uh, com uh, comparison to make. Uh, so how how do we know well uh, uh, one disease and so fast because we allow many countries allow each other uh, other countries to see the results directly or indirectly uh, allow them to see the results of what happened and how the the treatment was dealt and also not only the treatment but also the lockdown measures and many other things so i think is a is an interesting comparison do you think it, this might change in future how other diseases will um be taken care of i don't know because I mean, COVID-19 has a, it's a pandemic, pandemic and it has a sense of urgency. Um, ideally, of course, it would change. I think um, maybe in the research, com in the medical research community, there will, there will be a change because medical data will be changed differently um, because, you know, um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, basically, if you do research on a certain disease some parts of the research you have that like the pre-research you have to do uh, the pre-medical studies have, have already been done and you can make use of the data that has uh, that has been already uh, produced so I, I know that there's there's tons of research that we can't access although you know 
maybe it would be interesting to just publish it because the data could be also interesting to other researchers. I mean, even if we are not doctors or me medical professionals, we are interested in some parts of the data and we can read it. It's not like we cannot, cannot do anything with it. So maybe opening it up a bit more and, and not being so, I think there's sometimes this fear of sharing and, and, and losing your data. Um, I think seeing more the benefits, that's something that could come from, from this pandemic. But at the same time, I'm not so sure whether it's it will be rep replicated in other, for other diseases because the urgency is missing. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, I think, the main problem. Sorry, I would like to complicate a little bit the, the, the discussion here. We have a matter of, uh, as, I, as, I, as I, I, I said before, uh, linking data. Uh, uh, how people get uh, get the diagnosis of diabetes? How uh, how they they feed? They they get the healthy food or not? Or they they were hospitalized? That they they had uh, comp uh, diabetes complications and and or even died. How to link this uh, the, all these registers? I, I think in, in German can be easier than here. Or, uh, the government, but the same law that says in Brazil that all data is available, uh, make sure that uh, uh, all all data is anonymized. It, uh, they they keep away all personal data so we, we cannot identify that the, the, uh, even our even as uh, researchers we cannot identify people so we we have this events hospitalization blah, blah, blah. so dead or etc and uh, the only the only way that or the uh, the problem is who owns the information of course, citizens must have the, the access to, to the, 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 the individual uh, health data. But sure, insurance companies have this linkage of data. They can, they can follow up the, the, the complications or even, uh, or even uh, better uh, uh, outcomes of, uh, of of disease of diabetes, for instance. The problem is still democracy, transparency, and and this. Uh, I, I will leave this question to Jessica because it's it's very complicated that situation. Uh, many companies detain our data now, even the social media. Some some companies from uh, producing social or platforms of social media, insurance companies, some governments, they can follow up uh, or make some some kind of uh, uh, interventions that are not not. Uh, not uh, I, I don't know how to say that. Uh, uh, no, but I understand, for example, uh, my health insurance can kick me out of the plan or increase yeah. the, the payment that I need to make because they know how many times I went to the hospital or which disease I have or how yeah. likely I am to have diseases because there are a lot of statistics in insurance companies not only in health, but also, for example, in car insurance companies. So they charge differently people in different lanes for different genders. Trying to answer your question. So there is the um, Lei de Acesso à Informação, Freedom of Information Law uh, in Brazil that says basically that all the public data or public relate or the data related to the public power must be um, available mm -hmm. what this means uh so the data produced by governments uh and data for example a public related would be 
if I make a contract with a private, if I'm a government and I make a contract with a private company, so uh, some things from this contract needs to be transparent. For example, how much it was, what was the service, how much it costed. And there are some exceptions, uh, exceptions related to security, uh, exceptions related to um, uh, that could threaten people and and cases uh, that are uh, you can let me think in English how do you say that um, when you can trace who the person is so the data shouldn't uh, is it, this is anonymized but also it has to do without not being able to gather a few informations and say oh this data is about Jessica is about her I can identify her from this data so uh, this is uh, this is case to case. So there are governments, uh, sorry, in governments there are some data which is already public in active transparency, as we say. I'm I'm, I'm more specialized in procurement data and data from the public administration. Health data is actually not a, one of my my. I'm learning from you. Is not one of my main areas. Uh, but I would say that I there are you can request data from governments through the freedom of uh, information law, and sometimes they can deny based on that. So it's it's actually a really tricky um, but uh, a situation. But what you're saying and that's that's the the what what makes it more complicated. And Amara said that too. So I run with my running app and I share the data of my heart rate in social media, for instance. And this data belongs to the app who, which I used to run, for example, Nike app and Facebook, where I share the social media. But it's data related to me and the data related to public uh, uh, insurances. It's it belongs to people, but also belongs to the, the company. So I think it's that we have layers of privacy. The idea of privacy is changing for sure. What is our privacy uh, is changing for in one instance is making larger and the other instance is, is becoming more specific because um, my picture, my image is this is this private or not? We are live on YouTube right now. Is this private or not? I think this is a discussion between different governments and I, I actually don't have a really good answer for that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I think this is the part of the discussion. Uh, so if this data is not public, should it be public somehow? Or should part of this data be public? Could we say to this private uh, insurance companies in Brazil, and especially with the prevent senior case, um, what what data should be public so we can link and we can actually make better interventions? Because as Mara said, uh, some things sometimes you need other type of interventions, or only medical interventions, to avoid or diminish the case of a disease. So I think this is a really interesting uh, idea that we are bringing today. And uh, last question, actually, because of time, and it was going to be my question, but it's also a question from our audience, uh, Jessica Oye. She asked, she asked, let me see here. Uh, my interesting is mostly in relation of health to climate change. So I think it's for Professor Kistoven. What kind of diseases can we expect with the worsening of climate change? Um, and that was uh, also my question. Uh, what, what are the challenges that we are about to face? Uh, did you already track this uh, in Fiocruz? Uh, how do you see our, it's our next challenges? Thank you for the question, because I'm, I'm, I'm coordinating the, the, the Brazilian Health uh, Climate and Health Observatory. So we, 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 we have been producing many, many diagnoses of what is happening in the world, what is happening in each, each uh, Brazilian region with climate change. Uh, we have some, some 
particular concerns of uh, climate change in, in, in half in Brazil. It, it's it's more evident uh, climate change impact for in, in the northern hemisphere, and mainly because of, of extreme events like such as the flo floods and the intensive uh, rainfalls in in German. Uh, some uh, fires, uh, forest fires in the along the Mediterranean Sea, and many things are more, much more evident, and and the heat waves, of course. But uh, in many instances, the the impact of uh, climate change in, on in health is indirect, such as uh, vector transmitted diseases. We have a lot of that in Brazil. Dengue, Zika was a tragedy tragedy, uh, malaria is uh, it's, uh, getting better, but uh, it's uh, always a challenge here. So in water related, water related diseases in, in Brazil are, are still very important. Uh, 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 we have sometimes we have a collapse in, in water supply in Brazil that pr produces uh, shortage of uh, water supply and then many many uh, <clears throat> diseases so we are trying to to adapt the 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 the, the, the this uh overview of uh, climate change global to each region and 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 and, and try to adapt to to, to make uh, some uh, some some guidelines or, or, or some uh, recommendations for, for the health system uh, and, and other other sectors, of course. And uh, would you, well, you said uh, uh, water uh, or water related diseases. So then this means, uh, for example, uh, it has to do also with the sanitation. So you don't have access to tap water. So this would mean uh, that we would see the increase of some uh, febrichifoid, I don't know this <laughs> name in English, Fibre. Fibre. but uh, and other diseases that can be related to uh, problems of hygiene. Hepatites. Uh, if hepatites I understood, a. did I understand it right? <laughs> yeah, hepatites and, 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 and many agents of uh, producing diarrhea during mm -hmm. this uh, water uh, crisis. But we, 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 we must uh, emphasize that uh, some people, some people in Brazil, many people, not, uh, almost 90% of, uh, of residents have, have uh, uh, connection with the water, public water supply system. Uh, however, they this uh, supply can be interrupted dur during uh, some um, drop, uh, long drop period or, or even uh, a disaster, environmental or climate disaster can be, uh, we, we can see some shortages in the in, 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 uh, water supply. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, we cannot use uh, normality indicators, income, <clears throat> water supply, access to, to, to systems, uh, garbage collection, education, all these indicators change completely during disasters, you know? It's, 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 a, it's a, from, the, from the academic point of view, it's a very interesting uh, thing to study, but a little bit difficult because we, we it's diff, it's difficult to access a instantaneous uh, a portrait of uh, some situation during the disaster mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, but it's a it's a big issue for this century i think even in europe even in in brazil and other other countries well, uh, with this alarming <laughs> uh, statement, I we are short of time. I need to uh, unfortunately end our conversation right now. But uh, thank you, for Professor Christoffen, to join us today. 
it was a really interesting to get to know this the data on health from this point of view of the risks thank you very much thank you and thank you and thank you also mara um uh, mara mendes today for uh joining us uh and it was really interesting to learn more about the the german public system thank you a lot jessica and thanks yeah for inviting me because that was really interesting i am i would love to keep the discussion on because i think that's a really interesting topic and it's interesting to share it from those the perspective of those two countries well and i would like also to thank all of our audience who joined us today um data talks is a series of talks between experts from brazil and germany who discuss the use of public data in today's society the data talks is an initiative from myself uh, jessica Vogt, uh, as a part of the german chancellor fellowship from the alexander von humboldt foundation and it's host and supported by the Brazil Center of the University of Münster in the framework of the strategic partnership project VVUSPIN, funded by the DAV. So I'll see you all uh, in the next talk. Thank you.